Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Tech Tutor. Today we're going to talk about caching. So Spring makes this very easy. It's just a few annotations and you add some dependencies into your project. And then after that, it's all set up. It's pretty easy. I'll show you how to do it. Now, if you've never used caching before, or you don't know what it is, basically think of it as something you want to use if you have really long uh, calls to a database or a service. Uh, that data won't change very much. So basically you want to cache that response. So if you're looking up a record in the database and it takes like five seconds, you can cache it and it'll come back in less than a second. So the idea is also to make sure that you evict that cache because you don't want stale data. So if you have something that will change that data on the other end, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have something to remove that cache data so that way it pulls fresh data and I'll show you how to do that too. So let's go ahead and look at the code now. For this video, I thought I would first showcase the working code, and then we can go over the details of the code after. You can also find the source code at my GitHub, which I will have linked in the description. First, let's go ahead and use the get user by username API, and this one is not cached. So when I click it, it's going to fetch the data from my service, and I simulate a three second delay for both this API and the cached API. So let's go ahead and fetch it. And as you can see, it's going to take three seconds. So it came back after three seconds, the user ID, their username, status is my status, and the create date was January 3rd. Now, I will use the cached API. This is going to also take three seconds, but the same information comes back. Now, when I go ahead and click it again, because it is cached, you can see that it came back much quicker. It came back in five milliseconds. You can configure the cache to expire after so many seconds or other ways to evict the cache. And right now, the only thing that is going to cause the cache to refresh for me is the time limit I have set on the cache data. Let's go back to our first API. You'll see that this one, again, just to confirm it is not cached, will take the three seconds again. All right, now let's go ahead and update the data. I've got a parameter here that will help you evict the cache. So when we go over the code later, you'll see why this will actually prevent stale data. But first we won't use that. So we can show how the cache, if you don't have a way to prevent stale data from being there, it'll actually pick up the old value. So we'll call this new status instead of my status. And I'll send that change. And now, We'll go ahead and do the cached one first. You'll see it still says my status because it's cached. We'll use the other one that always fetches without any cache. And you'll see that it is new status. So let's go ahead, use that update API one more time. This time let's use the parameter that I've set to evict the cache so that way it will pick up new changes. And we'll call this another status. We'll go ahead and send that. And now you can see that that is what the new status is. The cache was evicted, so now it has to do a, a full refresh, which takes the three seconds. And now this one has another status. And this API will also pull back another status. And if we come back here, you can see that it still picks up that status very quickly because it is successfully cached. And just real quick, we'll do it one more time. We'll do one more new change just to confirm that we didn't time out our cache. So another new status. You'll see that the cache was evicted. And now I pulled up that another new status. And again, like I said, it's, it's cached. So now let's go ahead and go over to the code and I'll walk you through what I did to set this up. As you can see in my project, I have several different files over here. So the Docker Compose file that I have is what I'm using to spin up the database. If you'd like more information about how I did this, I have another video on Docker Compose and Postgres database, which I will link in the description, as well as another video about Flyaway, which is what this file is for, so that way I can create my database table that I'm using. In the application YAML, you can see how I'm connecting to the database. And then in the POM file, I'm using Spring Data JPA, so that way I can easily get and update and delete the records from the database. 
Spring Boot Starter Web, which I've gone over in other videos. Flyaway, which again, there's a video on that. You need this Postgres dependency if you're going to be connecting to a Postgres database. And then these next two dependencies are core for the cache. So you're gonna to wanna to have Spring Boot Starter Cache. And then I'm using this Caffeine dependency, which is a type of cache that Spring knows which version it is compatible with. So if you just put it here, it is aware of it. I can control and hover over it and you'll see that Spring is wanting it to use 2.8.8. .8. Next, I wanna have a class so that way it will map to the entity of the app user database table. So this way, when you do the save, update, delete, or fetching records from the database, it can map the results to this object. And I'm using that data annotation, which was back in the POM file, the Lombok dependency. What this does is it creates my getters and setters as well. And then over to the cache configuration, you can see that I've made it to where it will expire after two minutes. So again, as I was saying earlier, I can manually evict the cache, which I was doing, or if I didn't have that, it will also expire the cache after two minutes. It is up to you to make a decision on whether it makes more sense to evict data or to expire it after a certain duration or other configurations that can be done. You would also wanna consider that if you have multiple servers, you might wanna have a global cache rather than just a cache at each server, unless you can ensure that the user will connect to the same server every time. If they reconnect and they end up on a different server, they could end up having cache data on one server and not the other. And then you will also want to provide the name of the cache. So I'm using a constant I created and I'm calling this cache just database. Then in the controller, I've added some git mapping so that way we can fetch our user by username. So the first API is to fetch them by username and the second one is what I was using in order to use the cached method that is in the user service. Next, I had an API that I was using to update the status with or without using the eviction that I had created in order to make sure the cache was evicted when I wanted it to be. Going into the user service, you can see my get user by username method. It is using spring data. And so as long as it finds a result, it will return the result. Otherwise, it will throw an exception where it will say 404 not found. And then in here, I put some notes from the spring documentation. Basically what this is saying is that if you were to call the cached method from within the same method, it will not actually use the cache. That is because it needs to have a proxy to use this annotation. However, spring has made some changes that I have not actually myself used yet, where if you configure it a certain way, you will be able to call it from within this method, but not with the way that I have it set up now. So if you were to call this cached method here from another method within here, just keep in mind, it will not use the cache. And so how it's using the cache is with this cacheable annotation. And I need to inform it what is the name of the cache so it can match back up to this cache configuration so it knows that this cache bean, which again was noted by the cache name database, maps to this method. So what it will do is it will automatically cache based on the parameter passed in. You could configure other things to where you could change the key, but if you need something simple, for instance, where you know that you'll be getting a unique parameter into this method, like for me, I'm using username, I know it will be unique, I will get the intended result back that I will get only a cached result for some unique name. If the members passing into the method are not going to be unique, you probably wouldn't want to do this way and you'd want to do additional configuration. I have a method for saving a new user, which I use, but not in this video. 
You can optionally use this to add new users, but again, this was just to showcase a quick usage of the cache. Now, another method here is to update the user status. This is what was being used to update the user status without evicting the cache. And then this one is actually evicting the cache because of this cache evict annotation. Again, you need to inform it the name of the database cache that you are trying to evict. And then you need to also inform it of the key that it is evicting. So because I have two parameters here, this is what point I was making earlier is that you could configure the key for the cache. So I'm telling it that I want the username parameter to be used and that is what key we are evicting from the cache when this method is called. And lastly, as I said earlier, I had created a simulated wait time so that way you could see it actually causing a three second wait when you're not using the cached version, which again will be much faster. And then lastly, I'm using Spring Data, as I said earlier, so you'll see this CRUD repository here. So this creates a lot of convenience functions, so that way you can save or delete very easily without having to make all of those individual methods. And if you want to create other methods that are based on your property names, it is just going off of a particular naming convention. It'll automatically map these values out. And this is one of the great things about Spring Data. If you'd like more information on this, I can have a separate video about Spring Data in the future. Just let me know. And that wraps up this video about caching using Spring. I hope this was informative. And hopefully if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. You might be able to find new ways to improve your services by adding a local cache. Please like and subscribe for future content and let me know what you want to see next in the comments.